Welcome back. Now, his name was synonymous with the development of Indian music for almost half a century. Ravi Shankar's meeting with the Beatles in 1966 was to change the course of both Eastern and Western music history. And his concerts to raise money for the Bangladesh refugee crisis in 1971 set the trend for a series of aid concerts right down the years. Our culture editor, Matthew Kane looks back now at the life and influence of the man George Harrison described as the godfather of world music. may have been world famous as a sitar player, but Ravi Shankar's influence was much greater. He was a cultural pioneer who brought Indian classical music to an international audience. What I have been able to do was only popularize and make our music understood and appreciated in a proper manner. That has been my mission. Born in 1920 into a cultured family in Varanasi, Ravi Shankar's first love was dance. But at the age of 18, he fell in love with the sitar. He composed scores for films, theater, and ballet, but it was his performances around the world which would have the most impact. In Indian music, rhythm, melody, and movement, dance, you know, they're three um, very, very important elements and it's very rare you find a musician which has got three of those elements as strong as each other. So that makes the perfect um, tripod in a way. Ravi Shankar's virtuosity combined with an extraordinary showmanship crossed racial, geographical and musical boundaries. He enjoyed a long-standing partnership with classical violinist Yehudi Menuhin, but was most famous in the West for his collaboration with the Beatles. He met George Harrison in 1966 and taught him to play the sitar, an experience which fed into the album Sgt. Pepper and helped inspire the psychedelic sound of the 60s. In 1971, he performed at George Harrison's fundraising concert for Bangladesh. Thank you. If you appreciate the tuning so much, I hope you'll enjoy the playing more. His collaboration with Western cultural influences irritated some purists in India, but it inspired a fashion for fusion which has only gained momentum since and can be witnessed in the work of dancer and choreographer Akram Khan. Artists like Nitin Soni, um, Talvin Singh, my, uh, myself, um, many artists who are British, Asian, and I'm sure also, you know, in America and all over the world, um, that influenced us in a, in, a, in a big way to say, wow, things are possible. It can be opened up. Ravi Shankar was still recording and performing until very recently, often alongside daughter Anushka, a respected sitar player in her own right. He also had another daughter from his relationship with a concert promoter, American singer-songwriter Nora Jones. Arguably the first musician of the world, Ravi Shankar died recovering from an operation in San Diego. Matt Kane reporting. We're now joining us in the studio is the bass player for the horrors, Reese Webb, who's been influenced by Ravi Shankar's music. You're only 29, so what yeah. was your kind of first sense of his, his effect on British music? Well, I think, like a lot of people, it was um, actually listening to the Beatles as a young teenager and not only being introduced to the work of Ravi Shankar, but also the sitar as an instrument itself and indeed Eastern influence on Western music. And, of course, that would be his relationship and his friendship with George Harrison is something a lot of people know, but also very significant when you're a young listener and discovering music for the first time. I remember finding it quite magical to hear the tone of the sitar kind of swooping through the room, you know? We said he had a huge influence on world music, which is a different genre yeah. from the kind of music you're involved in. Mm. Um, but, but you're arguing that he had a huge influence on rock and pop. Well, what I think is really exciting is that his friendship and his work and his playing around the mid-60s, inspiring people like the Rolling Stones, the Kinks and the Beatles, not only opened up a door of possibilities um, incorporating Eastern influence, but also worked with a traditional idea of rock and roll being quite traditional in its blues format, explored another... You could experiment in any way you wanted and opened up uh, sights and sounds from all of the, over the world to incorporate their way into modern pop music. Did it need in... to be expressed with a sitar or was it 
sort of incorporated into guitar playing? Well, interestingly, of course, it does pop up on quite a lot of tracks. Brian Jones on Paint It Black is a good example. But um, I'm a big fan of some of the more obscure groups who perhaps couldn't get their hands on a sitar at the time. And what you do often find is people trying to recreate that sound in playing a certain line or style, mm -hmm. but perhaps just using a, a pedal. There's even a band called the... Uh, the Electric Prunes in America, who mm. recorded an advert. Well, even I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah, well, they did an advert for the Vox Wah Wah pedal, and on the advert, you hear them playing, and they say, make your uh, guitar sound like a sitar, and the Electric Prunes give it their best go there. So, massively influential, and, and it, even in electronic music as well, which I think is quite But when we were chatting before, you even argued that you could, uh, you could see the influence of, of Ravi Shaka in the Monkeys, and, hell, they were put yeah. together artificially. I think they get a hard time, though, the Monkeys, because they did actually try... When they, they got a bit of a hard time, and they did record some great songs, even if they hadn't written all of them. And I think they were very keen on being a part of what was going on. And actually, you know, perhaps them introducing young kids through their television show to uh, mind-expanding music isn't such a bad thing. Now, I, I, I love bass players anyway, but you are a bass player, yes. and it's hard to imagine that you were actually really inspired mm. by him because it's hard to see how a bass could really do much with the sitar music. Well, strangely, there's, an in, there's a, a quote from Dave Crosby from The Birds, and he said, uh, you, a mu you don't have to be a musician, just a lover of music and someone who enjoys music to be touched by the sound of Ravi Shankar. And I think it's as simple as that, really. It doesn't matter what instrument you play or even if you play an instrument at all, you know, music touches you because you enjoy it and because of the way it makes you feel. And I think that was something special about his music. Rhys Webb, thank you very much indeed for coming in.